Hello, Raider Dirt community, and welcome back. If you caught the first version, last week I talked with the president of our student body, Brittany Sharp. Uh, this week, I'm delighted to have the vice president for finance and administration, Greg Perkinson, with me. And I just want to remind you, uh, as we're getting started, that I can bring guests on you'd like to see. Uh, send a suggestion to president's office at sou.edu and tell me who you'd like for me to interview or what kinds of questions you'd like for us to answer. So how are you doing today, Greg? I'm well. It's Friday, although it's hard to keep the day straight anymore. But I'm well. Thanks for asking. Glad to hear it. So, Greg, one of your big responsibilities over the last month has been leading our incident response team. Uh, for folks who may not understand what's involved in that, could you give them a quick description of what the team does, maybe some examples of who's on it and the kinds of issues you're dealing with? Oh, I'd be happy to. So the, the incident response team is, is part of a, a larger structure or system which follows what's called the incident command system. And the team is task organized. So some of the key players, for example, in operations would be academic affairs, medical. Medical is critically important with this particular pandemic, student affairs, housing, as well as campus public safety. We also have a logistics component and uh, Drew Gilliland leads the logistics team. Uh, they make sure that we're ordering the supplies that we need and that we have the right policies and procedures. There's an administrative component as well as a financial component. As you might imagine, the financial component is critically important. Uh, in addition, we have uh, command and general staff that includes IT, HR, those other functions that take care of the team, take care of the people. And, and really our top priority is, is the safety and, and well-being of our students, our faculty, and our staff. And so with, the, with the, 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 the diverse mix of people that we have and perspectives, uh, they give me great advice, which I share with the executive leadership team to make sure we're, we're doing the right things. Great, that's great. I can tell you that uh, your team's doing great work and it's a real help to me and the rest of the team to uh, here every day all the topics that you're fielding and, and resolving. So let's take a look now at some of the questions that have been sent in to us, Greg. We are very concerned about our students and the financial impacts that the COVID-19 pandemic is having on them and their family. So one of the first things we did was uh, convene an emergency meeting of the Board of Trustees, and we discussed with them our desire to reduce student fees in a, in a small gesture, a small way of helping ease the financial burden on students and families. Uh, the Board agreed with us, and we were able to reduce student fees by 20%. We did that in a way that uh, we believe made sense keeping whole, for example, the Student Health and Wellness Center because that's continuing to provide both physical and mental health services virtually, but greatly reducing the fees of the Student Rec Center since that building has to be closed because of the governor's executive order. If you didn't watch the last virtual visit, I suggest you go check that one out because Student Body President Brittany Sharp did a great job of talking more about these fees and how the reductions were done. Well, that's a great question and it's actually a hard one to answer. The first part is easy. The team has done a great job in, in making plans and, and executing against a plan to cut about $3 million out of our uh, overall expenses. So the team's as I said, done a super job with that. And where it gets harder to answer is really tied to the uncertainty that we have based on this pandemic. So what's happened is we're seeing some lost revenues from tuition and fees, and coupled with that are increased expenses 
to uh, support the IT transformation or transition to remote delivery. And most importantly, we've seen uh, a lot of students, um, roughly 600 students, leave university housing to return to their homes. And what that does in, in this particular case is it, is it really changes the nature of the, uh, the revenue that we receive for that critical auxiliary function compared to what we planned. So it puts us about four and a half million dollars in the hole and uh, we'll work to, to find a way to re recover. But what I would say quickly is that we're getting some support from the federal government. Uh, the CARES Act will bring emergency money uh, in the form of student grants and it will also provide some funding for the university. One of the things that we did to achieve the $3 million reduction was to implement a hiring freeze. Uh, roughly in the middle of April, uh, we decided to freeze positions in order to save about $300,000. Yes, we plan to deliver our courses remotely over the summer. We know that many of our students count on summer courses as a way of picking up a course that they haven't been able to fit into their schedules before, or sometimes they lighten their load a little bit during the year and then pick up a course in the summer. So we want that to still be available. We've usually offered most of our summer courses online, so it's easy for us to make that transition. We are, I'd like to say, thinking about the fall term, of course, monitoring very carefully what the governor is saying about potential reopenings. We do have a group that's working on a reopening plan for SLU in collaboration with our city and our county. Um, we're most hopeful that we'll be able to be fully open and back in person in the fall, um, but we'll do whatever we have to do uh, to keep everybody healthy and safe. We currently have about 200 students that are living in university housing and to keep them safe, we provide reminders uh, that really support some of those basic do's and don'ts regarding washing your hands, creating social distance. And I really like what, what the Hawk Dining Facility did by putting X's on the floor, literally putting, you know, X marks the spot, reminding people to stay at six foot intervals, uh, they transition to uh, using disposable containers and, and to go, uh, a to go style delivery for the food. Uh, so that helps keep students safe in, in that regard. But uh, other little things like uh, signage uh, in various points that serve as good reminders, in addition to getting some uh, cloth masks, uh, we had a fascinating and uh, gracious effort from some local quilters that made a couple of hundred masks for students and they've uh, provided those to housing that they can give out to students. So for students, if you need a mask, stop in at housing, stop in at the IT help desk or stop in at HR and we'll give you a mask. To get information on the changes and the often rapidly changing situation, please go to sou.edu and look for the campus notifications page. There's a wealth of information there and you can sign up to receive campus notifications. Please be assured, we will get information out to you as quickly as we know it. We received a report of a student who was uh, abroad who returned and tested positive. The student when they return to their home state is being supported uh, by the public health community in that state. They haven't been to Oregon and they haven't been to the SOU campus. Uh, so as you could imagine, uh, we wish them well. Um, we trust that they're getting supported uh, back at home and, um, and hopefully Jackson County and SOU specifically will continue to have a good track record of keeping our students, faculty and staff safe. We don't have a precise date for reopening at this time because it's very dependent first on the governor's guidance and then on the work of our local health authorities and our other county officials. 
Uh, what I can say is that I have uh, begun a group that is working on reopening plans for Southern Oregon University. It's being led by the Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs, Neil Wolf, and Vice President for University Advancement, Janet Fratella. Uh, we'll be working our way through all these things with the goal of getting open as soon as we possibly can when we know it's healthy and safe for everyone. I realize people are probably wondering if we're ever going to have a final decision about commencement. I would like to remind uh, graduating seniors in particular, I sent out an email earlier um, last week talking about our uncertainty around this. It, while there may be some reopening of Ashland or of the southern part of Oregon, it is not currently looking like large gatherings of thousands of people will be allowed. So we are encouraging division directors and program chairs to think about smaller gatherings that potentially might be allowed by mid-June and certainly considering virtual recognition of our graduates. But the best answer I have is really still stay tuned, We'll make a final decision as soon as we can. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic question. And we've had a team working for weeks now to understand the guidelines and develop some criteria and, and uh, policies related to uh, issuing what will in total be $1.7 million worth of emergency grant funding directly to students. Uh, we expect to roll out uh, that criteria uh, this coming Monday. And uh, so we're looking forward to receiving applications, assessing those, and then being able to, to put some money in students' hands. All right, I think that brings us to the end of our time. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for joining me today and answering some of these tough questions. Um, and writer community, keep tuning in, uh, send me ideas for guests you'd like to have me speak with, or just questions that you'd like for us to explore. You can direct message us through our social media platforms, or you can send an email to president's office at sou.edu and put in the subject line, virtual visit question and we'll get back to you and or handle that question in the next version. All right, thanks for listening in and we'll see you next time. Thank you.